and where there is God true faith in you, make me a child of your peace. Where there is despair in life, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, only light. And where there is sadness, ever joy. O oh, Master, grant that I may never seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, in giving to all men that we receive, in dying that we're born into eternal life. That's St. Francis, the prayer of St. Francis. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. may God, who is wonderful in all his works, be with you all. And be with your spirit. The animals of God's creation inhabit the skies, the earth, and the sea. They share in the fortunes of human existence and have a part in human life. God, who confers gifts on all living things, has often used the service of animals or made them reminders of the gifts of salvation. Animals were saved from the flood and afterwards made a part of the covenant with Noah. The Paschal Lamb recalls the Passover sacrifice and the deliverance from slavery in Egypt. A giant fish saved Jonah. Ravens brought bread to Elijah. Animals were included in the repentance of Nineveh. And animals share in Christ's redemption of all God's creation. We therefore invoke God's blessing on these animals through the intercession of St. Francis of Assisi. As we do so, let us praise the Creator and thank God for setting us as stewards over all the creatures of the earth. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teemed, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, morning followed the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Señor, nuestro Dios, Qué admirable es tu nombre en todo, en toda la tierra. Señor nuestro Dios, qué admirable es tu nombre en toda la tierra. Quiero adorar tu majestad sobre el cielo con la alabanza de los niños y de los más pequeños. Erigiste una fortaleza contra tus adversarios para reprimir el enemigo y el rebelde. Señor nuestro Dios, que admirable es tu nombre en toda la tierra. Al ver el cielo, obra de tus manos, la luna y las estrellas que has creado, ¿qué es el nombre para que pienses en él, el ser humano para que lo cuides? Señor, Señor nuestro Dios, que admirable es tu nombre en toda la tierra. Le diste dominio sobre la obra de tus manos, todo lo pusiste bajo sus pies, todos los rebaños y ganados y hasta los animales salvajes, las aves del cielo, los peces del mar, y cuanto surca los senderos de las aguas. Señor nuestro Dios, que admirable es tu nombre en toda la tierra. Bueno, una corta reflexión, que también aquí está en, en, al fin del, de la, del librito, está atrás. 
una reflexión es en inglés, pero saben que todo aquí entiende en inglés. Saint Francis of Assisi, also known as the Little Beggar, is perhaps the most popular saint in history. Francis was born in 1182 in Assisi, Italy, and his baptismal name was John, but his father renamed him Francesco in honor of his love for France. The son of a wealthy merchant, Francis had time and money to host lavish banquets for young nobles who proclaimed him king of feasts. Parties and selling cloth left Francis little time for God. A handsome, charming, and educated young man, he spent his life, early life leading young nobles to parties. He dreamed of knighthood and longed for the adventurous life of chivalry. In pursuit of that dream, he joined in the war between Assisi and Perugia at the age of 20. In that war, Francis fought with youthful enthusiasm, but was wounded and taken prisoner. Spending the next year in a dungeon, he contracted malaria. Ransomed by his father, a more reflective Francis returned to Assisi. Sickness overtook him, and in that languishing experience, he heard the first stirrings of a vocation to peace and justice. The military victories of Count Walter of Brienne revived Francis' desire for knighthood. Under Brienne's command, he hoped to win his favor and become a knight. On his way to join Brienne, Francis stopped in Spoleto and heard the shocking news of his death. Overcome by depression, his malaria returned. One night, a mysterious voice asked him, Who do you think can best reward you, the master or the servant? Francis answered, The master. The voice continued, Why do you leave the master for the servant? Francis realized the servant was Count Walter. He left Spoleto, convinced God had spoken to him. From that moment on, Francis began to care for the sick and the poor, especially the lepers, convinced that this was what God had called him to do. A further call came in 1205, when a dramatic moment of prayer in the abandoned church of San Damiano, Francis heard a voice coming from the crucifix, which challenged him to rebuild the church. At first, he thought it meant that he should rebuild San Damiano, so he sold some of his father's cloth to raise money to build the church at San Damiano. His father, who was already upset about the life he was leading, took him to court, where he was ordered to pay him back the money. Francis compi complied with a dramatic gesture, renouncing his inheritance and handing his expensive clothing to him as well. Dressed only in a workman's smock, he left town and spent the next two years as a hermit, taking a vow of poverty and dedicating his life to God. Francis begged for his food, wore old clothes, and preached peace. He began to attract followers, and in 1209, with the papal blessing, he founded the Friars Minor, also known as the Franciscans. Then in 1212, with St. Clare of Assisi, he founded the foundation of the Order of Poor Ladies, now known as the Poor Clares. He also founded the Third Order of Penance, which included lay people. He was the first person to receive the stigmata, the five wounds of Christ, in 1224. Out of humility, Francis never accepted the priesthood, but remained a deacon all his life. He had a great love for animals. His ardent love of God merited him the name Seraphic. Francis died at the age of 44 on October 4th, 1226, at Portuncula, Italy. He was canonized by Pope Gregory IX less than two years later. And a quote from him says, If we endure things patiently and with gladness, thinking on the sufferings of our blessed Lord and bearing all for the love of Him, herein is perfect joy. In other words, he's a good example to us of, of how God can work in our lives. No matter what path we may be on now, we may think it has nothing to do with God. If we're open to receiving God's message, to God's call, no matter where you are, God can change your life for the better. No matter what sufferings you may go through, if you're focused on His love, He'll strengthen you, He'll guide you, He'll help you see that, that calling that He has for you. And as difficult as it may seem sometimes, as impossible as it may seem sometimes, if you truly allow Him to work in you, He can work miracles in each and every one of our lives. So think about it, meditate on what God has in store for you, what He's calling you to do, and then answer that call and, and live out your faith.
You gonna do the prayer of the faithful? No, you wanna do the the, 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 the responses and stuff? So okay. I'll start. God created us and placed us on the earth to be stewards of all living things. Therefore, let us proclaim the glory of our Creator, saying, O oh oh God, God, how, how wonderful, wonderful are the works of your hands. hands. Blessed are you, O Lord, who created the animals and gave us the ability to train them to help us in our work. O oh God, oh God, how, how wonderful, wonderful are the are works, works of your hands. hands. Bendito sea, Señor, que nos diste alimento de los animales para reponer nuestras fuerzas. Oh Dios, oh Dios cuán maravillosas son las obras de tus manos. Blessed are you, O Lord, who for the sake of our comfort give us domestic animals as companions. O oh God, God, how wonderful, wonderful are the works of your hands. hands. Bendito sea, Señor, que nos demuestras una señal de tu providencia, tal como tu Hijo nos dijo, de tener cuidado de las aves del cielo. Oh Dios, cuán maravillosas son las obras de tus manos. The prayer of blessing. Blessed are you, O Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God, maker of all living creatures. You call forth fish in the sea, birds in the air, and animals on the land. You inspire Saint Francis to call all of them his brothers and sisters. We ask you to bless these animals by the power of your love. Enable them to live according to your plan. May we always praise you for all your beauty and creation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 May God, who created the animals on, of this earth as a help to us, continue to protect and sustain us with the grace his blessing brings, now and forever. Amen. Amen.